hello and welcome to a new video so today we are friday 9th of december and it's time for run analysis gate analysis and vo2 max test i'm in front of the building of energy lab in ghent belgium to do my analysis i'm very curious because never done it before my own calculations are wrong that we all know so let's go inside and see what we can learn today well, hello again. Since the entire test was performed in Flemish, I'm now switching over to a voiceover only. And oh yeah, apologies for that dull intro, but that was recorded a while back and I guess I was still a bit shy. So okay, yeah, but that has been taken care of, so let's continue this thing. Before the actual test would start, there was of course a proper intake conversation. I explained in big lines my sports history and what my goal in running is. In highlights, I mentioned my history in the gym, which started around 2018, if I remember that correctly. Seems like ages ago. And of course, I mentioned that I run since January 1st, 2020, and that I almost did 5,000 kilometers in that time. Yep, indeed, not bad. I couldn't leave out that I already had several injuries due to not correctly training or recovering. Oh, those newbie mistakes. I also explained that currently I'm following an 80-20 endurance marathon training program by Matt Fitzgerald. I also do not take any rest days as I have noticed that I perform better if I run every day but that's just something personally for me and I've been doing this now since September 27th 2022 after that introduction was done it was time to move those feet oh boy finally the test of course is performed on a treadmill what you think I'm also wearing a special belt to analyze my running form they use a system called run easy that's a system developed in Belgium and this will do a complete gait analysis I'll link to it down in the description if you would like to have some more information about that. On the treadmill, I will start at a pace of 7 km an hour for 5 minutes. After every 5 minutes, the speed will be increased by 1.5 km an hour. It's of course the intention to continue as long as possible. It's an all-out test to see your physical capabilities. So even if you know that you cannot complete a full 5 minute block anymore, you still have to try and see how far you get. During the test, they will monitor my heart rate, test my lactate and ask me how big of an effort it is at that time. As you can see here, just before the end of a block, they ask me how this is feeling. I need to give a number between 6 and 20. 6 being relatively easy and 20 being almost dropping dead. Not long after they ask me that, the 5 minute block has come to an end, I jump to the sides and they take my lactate and off I go again. But don't worry, they only need to stab you once. The following times, they just reuse the same hole. Oh, thank god for that. After completing block number 5, it was also time to introduce the VO2 mask. This is to measure the amount of oxygen your body can use during an exercise. There was no need to introduce this mask sooner in the test. In the previous 5 minutes block, I indicated being around number 16, so I was getting closer to the maximum of my capabilities. Block 6 was at a pace of 14.5 km an hour. During that block my heart rate went up to 186 beats per minute. At the end of that block I gave the number 19, so there was still some energy left in the tank, but not a lot. As this is an all out test, I started the 7 block, yeah call me crazy, but I went all out, but I didn't manage to complete it. Block 7 was at a speed of 16 km an hour, in which my heart rate went up to 191. And I needed to stop at 1 minute 25 seconds because I couldn't go any further. In the end, they reduced that speed to 14.9 km in the report because I didn't complete that 5 minute block. And then a final lactate test was performed to complete the test. As you can see here, the smart ass that I am, I just walked off the treadmill thinking it was over, but I needed to do a cooldown. It was good that they said to me come back on because all of a sudden I started getting lightheaded because of a big drop in my heart rate. If I wasn't careful, I could have passed out or even thrown up. After that cooldown, it was time to take a refreshing shower and in the meanwhile, the guys of Energy Lab could create the report. The report was a big eye-opener for me. As a VO2 max, the result was 57. My Garmin watch only gave me a 52. That's a big difference if you ask me. And yeah, I have more trust in the results from the analysis than from what my watch tells me. But yeah, I can't do a VO2 max like this every month. Previously, I based my training on roughly calculated heart rate zones. On the left, you can see the heart rate zones that I was using before this test, and on the right, you can see the new heart rate zones as Energy Lab mentioned in their report. This was a significant change. My zone 2 could all of a sudden go 10 beats per minute higher, and I even got recommended to sometimes push towards the upper end of zone 3 to increase my endurance and eventually speed. Then the report brought us to my aerobic and anaerobic threshold. Aerobic threshold is the level of exercise intensity at which you can run without accumulating significant lactic acid in the blood. On average, this should be roughly around your marathon race pace. When you reach your anaerobic threshold, your blood lactate starts to accumulate much higher, which will cause your muscles to stiffen. This happens because lactic acid can no longer be removed quickly enough, 
and be combined with other molecules to make some more energy. I never really had an idea where those two points were situated for me. In the test, they pointed out that the aerobic threshold is at 160 beats per minute or at 12 km per hour pace. The anaerobic threshold is at 178 beats per minute and is around the pace of 13.7 km an hour. The rest of my training are incorporated, the new heart rate zones, and I'm glad that I did this one analysis. In the end, what was left was the gait analysis. As a lot of people probably have this, perhaps you're wondering, is my posture good when I run? Are my feet landing correctly underneath my body? Am I heel striking? All those things. To my surprise, my results were all pretty good. Because of this result, I stopped worrying about perhaps doing something wrong and I stopped completely in trying to correct something that was already good. Now, the big question is, will I do another run analysis test in the future? Yes, of course. Depending for what I will be training, this information will be very useful to make sure that I can train accordingly to the correct parameters. Obviously, a run analysis with additional bells and whistles like VO2 max and gate analysis costs a bit of money. But the return on investment on this is huge if you want to get the best out of your running. For the rest, that's a wrap on the video. If you have any comments or questions, drop a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you found this video informative, do not forget to like and smash that subscribe button if you don't want to miss the follow-up video on this run analysis. And I thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!